digital brush is like a rubber stamp. You can stamp it in any color or orientation, but with a digital brush you can also stamp it in any size. Once you purchase and download our brushes, this is what you'll find in the file. You'll get individual art files, which are ping files of each brush. You'll also get an ABR file, which can be loaded into Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Photoshop Elements, which contains the entire brush set. To load those into Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Photoshop Elements, simply right-click on the ABR file, choose Open With, and then choose the program that you're running on your computer. If you And it will automatically load it then in Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Photoshop Elements, whichever program you're working in. If you are not working with that photo editing software, but another photo editing software, you can open the individual ping file by right-clicking on it as well and choosing Open With and then choosing the photo editing software that you're working with. In this case, I'm going to be demonstrating using Adobe Photoshop Elements version 8. Once you have the ping file open, you can define it as a brush in the Adobe applications by going up to Edit and Define Brush. That will put it into your brush file and you can use that individual file if you don't want to load the entire set. You can also load it in many other photo editing applications. They either have a brush available to you or something called a stamp which is similar to a brush. So you'll need to research that and find where you load it. Typically it will be under the Edit menu. You can use the ping files by, by selecting the Move tool and grabbing the ping file and dragging it onto your layout or your project. It will come in as a black file. If you want to change the color of that, you would go over to the Layers palette, open a new layer above it, go down to the foreground color, which is this color box right here, click on it, and then you would choose a color family from the bar right here. Let's say that we want to make this blue. I would choose the blue color family and then choose select the shade that I want to make it. Click OK. I'm simply going to fill the layout or make sure that you're on a new layer over here. Fill that layer with that color by going to the Edit menu, choosing Fill Layer from the dialog box, selecting Foreground Color and clicking OK. Once I have that filled, I want to attach it to the ping layer or the where I drug on the brush below. And I do that by going to the Layer menu and, check, and selecting Create Clipping Mask. In earlier versions of Photoshop Elements, it will say Group with Previous. The keyboard shortcut is the same. It's Command-G on a Mac, Control-G on a PC. And that will attach the blue color to the layer below it. If I want to move it, I will select that layer that I have the brush on. And I will simply get my Move tool and then I can, I can move it within. You'll need to probably lock your dark blue layer above so that you don't move that one. Then select the brush and move it as such. You can also rotate it by going to the corner handle and getting the curved arrow and that will allow you to rotate it. Now if you've loaded the brushes and you want to use it as a brush, I'm going to go ahead and click the green check mark so it'll let me move forward. I'm going to turn off that layer. Now I recommend that if you're using brushes that you always stamp on their own layer because that will give you the most editing capability. That will allow you to resize them and move them individually later on. And if you don't like them on the project that you're working with, you can shut them off by turning off the eye icon, which is to the left of the layers of that layer that you've stamped on. I'm going to go ahead and start a new layer by going down to the Create New Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers palette. And you can see I have a new layer right here. I'm going to choose the Brush tool, which is over here in the Tools palette, Keyboard Shortcut B. It looks like a paintbrush with a tip of blue paint. Once I click on that, I can go into the brushes up here in the Option bar and um, select which brush I want to stamp with. Once I've selected my brush, I'll close that brushes palette and I have the brushes right here. If I want to resize this particular brush that I've chosen, I can either go up to the options palette to size or a quicker way to do that is to use the bracket keys which are just to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. The left bracket key will make your brush smaller, the right bracket key will make it larger. Now you don't want to make the brush too much larger than the size it came in because it will stretch those pixels and it will not be as clear of an image. Once I've stamped it, I can select the Move tool and then I can still rotate that brush. I can resize it by going to the corner handle and pushing in or pulling out. And I can also move it by going into the center of the brush where I have the black triangle and I can move it around on my layout. 
Once I like where I've placed it and the size that I've made it, I go ahead and click the green check mark. Now if you need to load brushes from inside Photoshop Elements, you would select the brush tool, go up to the brushes palette or the option bar at the top, choose the brushes palette, and over on the right hand side there's two small arrows. If you click on that, you'll get a flyout menu which will allow you to load brushes. I recommend that you load them from the preset manager. The reason being is it will add them to the existing brushes that you already have loaded rather than replacing them. Once you click preset manager, you would go to load, then you go into the file where you have your brushes. In this case, they're in my downloads because I'm working on a Mac. And you would choose the ABR file and hit load. And then click on done in that um, palette. And that is how you use the brushes from basicgray.com.